Coach Romano, Notre Dame College down here at the National Convention. You're going to do some recruiting here at the C3. Sure. Uh, first things first, yeah, right. nobody recruits better in Division II than Notre Dame College. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. Anthony left. Yeah. Right? And I thought, Two and a lot of people ago. thought, right. it was going to fall yeah. off a cliff. And I know you've probably heard that. <laughs> of course. Right? But you guys were runner-up this past year. We won it the year. The and you year. won it the year after he left, actually. The year he That's left. That's correct. The year he, he left a year before that. In other words, the beginning of the year, uh, we won it that year. So, so you've won first two second. out of the last five? Uh, we've won... Uh, two out of the last five. I, I lose track here. Since... 14 si Since and 14. 16. We won in 14. We were second in 15. In 16, we were second. 17, we won. Last year we won. So you guys have been first or second yeah. since all since, last five years? Since 13, correct. That's yes. incredible. And then in 2013, the first year we were in, we were third. That's incredible. And we were, so you've we were never not won a trophy? We've won uh, between first and second, we've had nine national but championships. But four, four, but four yeah. trophies. And because four, top and, four get trophies. And we also, oh, yeah, we, yeah, we, all, we, all, we want a trophy You get a trophy every year? Every year. Yeah. That's incredible. First How do you sustain yeah. it? You know, I'm talking to you today. Well, you're, uh, first of all, you're 70 years old. Yeah, 70 you're the last, oldest, last You're the week. oldest coach here at the uh, convention, right? Probably. Probably. How do you do it? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I get up every day and I just try to do the same things I've been doing and try to keep enough energy. The energy is the key level because, you know, as you get older, you know, as much energy. But uh, I still have a passion for the sport, and I still can uh, run the practices the way I want and uh, show the technique the way I want. So that's that's my big thing. That's my big thing. Why didn't you fall off a cliff after Anthony uh, left? Why have you been well, able to sustain Well, my system, I, the other day, that's a really good question. The other day I wrote down on a legal pad the number of, of assistants I've had in the 12 years we've had the program, and I've had 18. 18 different people have been my assistants, and yet we still win or come second every year in whatever division we're in. Because in the NEI, we won four times, too. We also won the club national tournament. Uh, it's recruiting, and it's um, a lot of things. It's coaching, it's recruiting, it's um, just the whole program and how we uh, present it. And um, it's been very, very fortunate. Yeah. You, you look at, you were raised under the first CEO coach in, in, yeah. in I think, yeah. NCA. Well, I mean, there were other yeah. NCA coaches, but the first high school CEO coach, yeah. Mike Milkovich. Right. Big Mike Milkovich. That's right. That's He's right. your coach. You, and you yeah. wrestled in the greatest high school program, you know, up until year. Blair and St. Yeah. Ed's, right? We, we, Maple was, Heights. You know, which we talked about before, but to put it on camera, you know, when I was in high school, we never lost a dual meet. I never lost a dual meet. We, we, never, we never lost. And Big Mike had uh, you know, a lot of things that I do, you know. Uh, he was innovative at that time in the 60s, that's a long time ago. And, you know, um, and the techniques too, you know, things have evolved. Uh, things that were done way back then, are, they're, they're still done today, but of course a lot more. You know, people weren't diving underneath each other back then. People weren't doing certain things. People weren't, you know, head outside singles. People weren't doing that. I mean, they would tell us way back then, if you put your head on the outside on a single leg, you know, you, the guy would cross face you and you, you'd lose the move. And, you know, that doesn't happen anymore, you know. Now <laughs> guys are doing all this crazy yeah. dive rolling. Yeah, and you How have, have you adjust. evolved with it? Yeah. How have you adjusted? Well, uh, you know, I've, I've evolved and, and watched it and studied it. And fortunately, you know, I... You know, I don't do too many camps anymore, but in my lifetime I did over 400 camps all over the country, and I got exposed to a lot of different people all over the country, from Myron Roderick on down, and uh, you just have to adjust, and you have to learn, and you have to study, and you have to, you know, pay attention, and not, and not think you know everything, because you don't. No one knows everything. They might think they do, but they don't. And you have to always evolve and, and have an open mind, and say, you know, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. You, you know, guys even know, even though maybe you haven't done that before. <laughs> you guys are loaded yeah. coming back again, though. Yeah, we are. Teacher, you've had yeah. how many times has Teacher been in the national final? He's Russell uh, Tears has been in the two, finals. Tears. Yeah, he's two for two. He's second twice. He's got two more years. You got him back. Yeah, you got a lot of guys back. We, we have a we have a guy at every weight I think can score at the national tournament. Can you win? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we'll be in the mix. I think we'll be in the mix. St. Cloud's very good. Um, I think we're in the hunt. Um, we have a uh, real good team coming back. We have uh, seven men on my team who at some point in their career have been All-Americans in D2. Seven men, including, in, including the, the top one be, being Cameron, who's second twice. Um, we have uh, two-thirds coming back, three-thirds coming back, who took third. 
We have a, a good uh, Ivan McClay graduate. He was national champ two years ago and third last year. And we have a kid back in him up named Campos, who's a pretty tough kid. Uh, we have uh, we've we've pulled in. Uh, might count four, maybe five major recruits. We pulled in Rodriguez from Ohio State, who won a match at the Jose. national tour. Jose Rodriguez. So he's going to manage team. Okay. He's 41 so, pounder. So here's yeah. my question. The, yeah. the real question for mm -hmm. you, and mm -hmm. you coach at the Division One level at Kent State, mm -hmm. and wrestling is dying at the Division One level, mm -hmm. arguably. They're not, they're not adding, that's for okay. sure. <laughs> you guys are adding, at a, yeah. at, and I would like to say at an alarming rate, Four even in Ohio, right? Yeah, Urbana. Urbana. Right? Yeah. So, so looking Four at that. new teams this year. You know, Notre Dame College is a newer program in the last decade. Yes. Lake Erie College, newer program yeah. in the last right. Tiffin, yes. right? So you look at even just Ohio alone, and then you go nationwide. Yes. D2 is where it's, where it's at. Enrollment-driven right. is where it's at, you know, even D3, agree. right? Yeah. Why is that? Why is the future of wrestling, maybe potentially in college wrestling, D2 and D3? Well, because most of those institutions are smaller schools that are uh, student-driven. They, they want students. They need students. Where in Division One schools, huge, you know, entities that are in the Big Ten, they don't need students. They got forty thousand or more students, and they don't need thirty more people on the campus. But at a school like ours, where there's only maybe twelve hundred people, you add thirty or forty students. That's huge. That that means a lot of money, and so that's why it's happening. And like you say, we've added I think four teams: Urbana, Lander, Davenport, uh, a school Wesleyan. Um, there's another one in there, Kentucky Wesleyan. That's four. And there was another one that I'm missing right now. And there's a ton. Yeah. Of, it's it's yeah. amazing to see. It's just it's growing. And even NAI, growing. you know, yes. because you guys They're transitioned from NAI to Correct. D2. Yeah. Yes, so that was always like kind of a transition when you yeah. look at But there's some teams that just stay NAI. Yeah, that's right. right. Cumberland's, I want to say, yeah. stayed NAI. And, and they, they have a good number, too. There's yeah. probably, you know, 45 or 50 of those teams, too. And so we're, we're probably in the mid-60s or upper 60s before uh, a year or so goes by. And, you know, before it's over, we'll probably – have as many teams as Division One, you know, because that's where they're adding for those reasons, and it's a good thing. We just added more qualifiers. Um, now we're going to uh, we're going to six regions and three at each weight class. And before it was four regions, four in each weight class. So now we got an 18-man bracket, a 16-man bracket. More is always better. Yeah, more is better. So this is the first year, and when we have our breakout meeting here at the convention, we'll be told, you know, who's in our region. Um, where the site's going to be, and et cetera, et cetera. So we're moving forward with more qualifiers, which is good. That's very good. You know, and so, and it's a tough division, uh, you know, uh, uh, not to be underestimated. There's some good kids in Division Two, some really good kids in Division Two. We added four Division One kids this year in our recruiting. Zach Kelly came from uh, Bucknell. He was a starter two years. Like I mentioned, Rodriguez from Ohio State. He was in a national tournament, won about. Uh, Wade, Wade Hodges out of Maryland is on our team now, and we picked up a St. Ed's kid who went to Missouri, uh, Jared Campbell, who's going to be uh, probably a 97 pounder. Oh, I'm excited, yeah. coach. Yeah, J yeah, Jared Campbell's a monster. Uh, he came at the beginning of last semester, and he's eligible. We just didn't wrestle him because uh, Missouri was trying to get him big, and so he came in real heavy. Yeah, and, and he weighed probably about 270. Oh, wow. And he was a 220-pounder. And then we he actually wrestled in Akron at the 213 weight. He actually wrestled Colin Moore, Colin Moore. Oh, okay. He took Colin Moore down once, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I'm <laughs> at, excited at to see it, Coach. I'm going to be at a so, couple of duels this year. Yeah, we're come. Yeah, you guys yeah, out. yeah, we're going to be at the Cleveland State. We're going to be at the, matter of fact, the Ohio Intercollegiate, which is at Case Western. Ohio State's going to be there with their whole team. From what I understand, and we wrestled Lake Erie College uh, in a tournament there, Cleveland State. I'll be at that duel. Yeah. You're okay. Lake Erie College. Yeah, Lake Erie. That's always a barn, a barn burn. They got a new coach. Yeah. He seems like a, a good man. And um, you know, we added. Uh, we just found out this morning that the University of North Carolina Pembroke has joined our conference in the sport of wrestling as an affiliate. So now our conference is getting a little bigger. We, we only have we only had three teams in in the Mountain East Conference that had wrestling teams. So now we have four. And then Urbana is adding wrestling, that's five. So we have five teams. So we're getting close to having a conference. Before we, we ne I've never been in a conference in, in either NAI or D2, never been in a conference. It's always an independent schedule. That's why I do so many open meets. And then the second semester we do the national duels, and then we do have some meets with Ashland, and Lake Erie, and, but those are all independent meets. There are no conference meets whatsoever. So we don't, the only thing we have to shoot for is the regional championships and the national tournament. Yeah. And, yeah.
We have more kids coming in for recruiting here. Yeah, good. I'll be watching. Yeah. You yeah, got anything yeah. else for me? No, it's really good. I really appreciate all the hard work you've done and you stayed with it. And, you know, the media and the way it's exploded with the sport of wrestling is fantastic. You know, way, way, like, you know, like just to throw an aside here, this is really, in my mind, funny. I got a copy the other day, which I had read in 1966 when I was a senior in high school. And it was the front page of the Amateur Wrestling News in black and white. It was the only media outlet in the sport of wrestling in the country, the Amateur Wrestling News. That was it. And you never found out anything until months later. After, like, the World Championships, you'd find out a month later who won because no one knew, you know, unless you were there. And so on the front cover was, was Gable's picture along with three other guys, and they had listed the people with uh, the highest winning percentage in the country. And, and my name happened to be in there, but Gable was at the top, and, and I saved it, and I thought, Look how far we've come from 1966 when black and white front page of the Amateur Wrestling News and that was the only thing that you read. And it was just like small. These are high school guys, they would say, and that's it. And that's it. And then I went through every single name of the honorable mention and everything and, and you know, see if I recognized any of the names, see if they did anything after high school. And some did and some didn't. But, you know, the media is just like everything else exploded, which has helped wrestling, helped wrestling a lot, which I like.